Hello, my name is Kamini Desai. I'm the Education Director of the Amrit Yoga Institute. For the last 25 years, I've been helping people master the inner dimension of their lives. I know, and you probably know, how powerful yoga is, and especially the Amrit method of yoga is, in transforming the way that you relate to yourself, to your thoughts, and to your body. If you're interested in taking an immersion training with us or a certification training, I'd like to take you through what you can expect from an immersion or certification training. I think that you'll see that one of the things that's unique about the Amrit Method is that we focus on two pieces. A lot of trainings will focus either exclusively or virtually exclusively on the poses without knowing what the poses are designed for. Other trainings will help you focus on the scriptures and you know where are you going, what are you supposed to do, what is the nature of the self, all those kinds of things, but there's no practice to go along with it. Well, what we do in the Amrit method is we have powerfully combined these two. You are going to be doing yoga poses and learning how to use yoga poses for your physical benefits, but you're also going to be learning how to use those poses in a way that fulfills what the original scriptures described. And in fact, when we study the scriptures, you'll see that exactly what's written in these ancient texts is how we practice. It's built into the practice that we have on the yoga mat. So we are taking ancient teachings, but applying them to the yoga mat, which is actually, of course, what yoga was originally designed to do. It's just that so many of us have gotten away from it. So this training is designed to bring you back to the original authentic teachings and practice of yoga as it was designed to be done. The first part of the training, the first 10 days of an Amrit Method training is an immersion, and it's for you. It's also the basis of you becoming a teacher to teach other people. So the thing that's important about this is if you are thinking about becoming a teacher, it's not enough to just have mental information. You teach who you are. People are affected not by what you know, but the presence that you carry with you. So our effort, before we ever get into theory of teaching or any of that, is to transform you. So that when you speak, you speak from knowledge, you speak from conviction, you know what the practice has done from you, and that automatically brings that trust and that opening in others. And I have many people tell me that um, Amrit teacher is what actually brought them to this training because they were so impressed by some quality that they brought for their to their teaching. And that's what we want for you. So in the training, the first 10 days, we begin at the very top of the list. And the first is, how is me standing on a yoga mat, putting myself in various yoga postures designed to lead me to the state of liberation, right? This is a question that a lot of people don't ask themselves. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. Yoga is a tool. And it's a tool that's designed to build something. So we need to know what it is that we're trying to build, which will tell us when we're using the tool in a way that's helpful or not helpful. So if you know what enlightenment is, what it looks like, how the yoga pose is designed to take you there, then the likelihood of arriving is great. If you have no clue what you're trying to build, uh, how will you know if you even arrived? So first thing, the tools of liberation. This is yama, niyama, asana, pranayam, pratihara, dharana, and dhyana, the eight classical limbs of yoga. Um, and how to practice yoga in a way that's designed to move you towards liberation. But in addition, we have the seven principles of Amrit Yoga. And these seven principles are actually designed to ensure that the way that you're using the eight limbs is used in a way to move you towards the ultimate intention of yoga, liberation, or consciousness versus simply reinforcing the ego, okay? So we are practicing the pose in a way that moves to consciousness, the posture of consciousness versus the posture of ego. And these tools will help you do that. An example would be one of our principles is intention. And the intention is for you to move towards consciousness. So if the way that you're doing the pose, so Patanjali over here says do poses, do asana, but you could use those poses in a way to create conflict, self-judgment, uh, comparison, frustration, none of it which is leading you to the state of consciousness. So you need to ask yourself, you can't just do a bunch of asana and hope that it's gonna get you there. You have to do asana combined with intention so that it takes you and helps you build what it is that you're trying to build. 
You'll be learning about posture alignment and modifications for your body. How can you access the benefits of the pose for you? And in the second half, you'll be learning for other people, all right? And we'll be introducing you to anatomy. Second half of the training is now about transmitting what you yourself have experienced. How can I bring this to other people in a way that is accessible and interesting and engaging for them, something they can do, all right? So the very first piece of this is you moving out of your own patterns that hold your energy back. So we all have ways that we hold down our personal power. Um, we get afraid of the energy of our fire, the energy of our clarity, the energy of our softness and vulnerability. And we need to learn how to bring that out fully in order to be a powerful transmitter to others. And whether you wanna be a teacher or not, this is powerful teaching that's gonna help you in all areas of your life. The next thing we'll be looking at in the second half of the training is making these poses accessible to other people. So um, what do we do if we need to make the class more gentle for the people in our class? Um, how do we work with people who maybe are veterans who don't have a leg? Um, how do we adjust for that? Um, how do we use the principles of anatomy that we've learned for various limitations in the body? We will teach you about sequencing and creating uh, variations on our level one sequence to work for various uh, populations. And you will be learning a specific languaging. It's script based. So you will learn specific words that will get people into and out of the pose, hitting the major alignment points in a very clear and concise way. So clear that the students don't even have to look at you to get what they're supposed to do. And the idea is that this languaging is so clear and direct that there's room for you to build in these seven principles and eight limbs so that you can actually create a theme for your class designed around helping people master their focus, master their breath, mastering pulling energy inward, mastering managing reaction, right? So the words are spare on the pose side so that you can build in themes into your class and for those of you who take the time to really learn that, that languaging, we will teach you how to build these themes into your class to create a class that builds the scriptural teachings right into the poses that you are delivering to other people. This is a very, very powerful training and you will be practicing the principles of yoga from day one. Don't let your level of experience in the poses stop you because it's not about whether you can touch your toes or not, it's all about the personal transformation that happens all along the way. Once you hit the forest and you start to get close to the ashram, the energy just shifts. There's calmness, there's openness. And once you hit the gates of the ashram, the love is just incredible. And just like when Guru Dev walks by you, the love he emanates just opens your heart. There's, it, you can't stop it. I'd love to meet you in person. I'd love to see you there. Please contact us if you have any questions. Thank you for listening. Jai Bhagwan.